Hey everyone, welcome to a very special episode of Diary of a Ghost Hunter and we are tonight at the Irish Military Museum, uh, courtesy of Puka Paranormal who have organised it for us, but I've got some friends over here who are joining me, uh, so please introduce yourself. Uh, I'm William Sullivan and this is my museum and uh, it's a hobby that went mad. That's the best way to <laughs> <laughs> And I'm Rosemary from Puka Paranormal. And she's the one that's organised all of this and let me just say, we're freaking uh, astonished, <laughs> just absolutely astonished at what we have found. So what we're doing is we've got the rest of the team over there somewhere, they're, they're lurking about, there they are. Uh, we are going to go into the museum and find out what the ghost stories are, but we're not going to let them know what the ghost stories are. So we will turn around and head on in and find out what they are. Let's go. And look, truly, this is just amazing. I, when they told me we were coming here, I thought it was going to be a dusty, dirty, pokey little shed somewhere. And uh, it's not. It's freaking not. It's set up in little scenes and uh, stories, really, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that around this way. I'm going to make everyone seasick. All right, so tell me your stories and where they are. Um, well, you are here now. We've had uh, paranormal teams here who set up uh, a, a phone in the media room here uh, beside us. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were in the coffee area where you actually started videoing. Mm -hmm. And they were telling, asking questions. And you could actually hear the chairs moving around in the room. Wow. But they were asking were they German, also were they British, American, uh, French, and then uh, or, or with, with German, and they could hear German. Ah, now I think Very Renata, clear. I'm going to turn it around here so I can make everyone see sick yet again. Uh, <laughs> Renata can speak Polish as well as probably a bit of German, so I'm hoping that we might be able to use that tonight. Will that be useful? Uh, the German will be because there is a lot of activity with Germans. We believe there's about four down the back here. Yeah, I saw some of the... Anyway, we won't go any to those stories, will we? Uh, don't talk about the war, as they say. <laughs> well, how can we not talk about the war here? Look at it. <laughs> All right, where's our next location? OK, shall we? Look, it's just amazing. Look at all the setups and things that are in there. They've got models, we've got horses... Sorry, I'm, I'm sightseeing as we're going, even though I've walked yeah. through once already. Just astounding. Uh, and we, we, we've also got Rosemary, who we're hoping she'll tell us some of her experiences as well. So what area are we in now? Uh, we are in the Soviet Union Canadian section. Uh, behind me we have a Canadian lorry. Uh, this is an ambulance. Uh, the reason we changed to an ambulance is we had five different paranormal teams here and they all had experiences here. Um, one of them was taking pictures and you could clearly see a figure going across and sitting down on the pasture side um, and you could actually see two black eyes where it was all done in bandages. Um, that was one uh, and then a year later uh, uh, we had another team here and they were just over there taking a picture of the side of them. So the three girls were here and taking a picture of the ambulance behind them and they asked me um, is is there a mannequin in the back of that? And when we looked at the photo two months later, we were looking at the photo and uh, you could actually see the same person in the back of it again. Right, so we, no just heard, we just heard a bang over there. Is that the people outside or was that something in here? Because that sounded like it was in here. Yeah. Yeah. So right. did you hear that? Let us know in the comments if you did hear that because it was quite a substantial bang. Awesome. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, sure. Uh, over here, uh, we had um, people saying they could hear this going on. Uh, okay. So yeah. the British one sounds a lot different, but this is the one they could hear and said this, they definitely heard this. Well, that's good because now we've got that sound on camera, yeah. Yeah. so we've got it recorded and we'll be able to compare it if we... Two groups said that, you know. Wow. So. What about you? Have you personally had experiences here? Uh, yes, lots. <laughs> um, stuff flying off counters uh, or off presses. Uh, in, the, in the room we were in earlier on, you'd hear people walking across the floor and then dragging boxes across the floor. 
um, down the back. You see, you think you'd see somebody walking, and then when you take a second look, you, there's nobody there. Um, lots of stuff, lots of stuff, lots of orbs. Do um, the mannequins move? That's what I was going to ask you as well, because there's mannequin heads missing from a certain area. Did Teresa ask you about it? No. So at the area over there, there were right. loads of mannequin heads up the top. And she said when she was here before that the mannequins' heads had moved. In the Vietnam section? I think it is, yeah. That's twice I've heard that now. Okay. Two different teams. So that, there, that one of the heads actually changed. No, the mannequins the are still there. Okay. Exact, they, There's they some been, there, that's why I was wondering. They're the exact, exact same ones that are there. They haven't been touched. Okay, so they have moved before the heads. You've heard that before from teams. I've heard that from you and then I've heard it from another team only okay. about two months ago. Okay, that's good. Uh, wow. And they just said they felt like the head was following them around the room. Yeah. One of the women. So Bloody so mannequins. I'll show you what the mannequins are. <laughs> yeah. I will keep an eye out later on and see if the others All right, cool. There, you'll hear people talking in here. We, we, we had a, a guy here one day and we were doing a living history weekend here in the museum. And one of the women was dressed up as a nurse. And uh, at the, the whole show was over at half four, five o'clock. And at seven o'clock, one of the lads that was here came in and uh, he came out and he started laughing. I was saying, you're trying to frighten me in. And we were looking at him and saying, what are you, what are you on about? And he says, this, one of the girls is in dressed as a nurse. Oh, and we were looking at him and saying, what are you on about? You know? And um, then he just realised then that there was actually nobody here except the three of us. You know? so, is that by the ambulance down below? That's actually over there yeah. in the World War One section. You know? the amb where the ambulance is down below, I've heard a woman singing in French. And then we've asked her, what she, was she a nurse? And it came through, yes, and her name was Michelle. And she, we could hear her singing in French first. Oh, wow. Uh, very fairly, only about three of us, we were around six of us here, and three of us could hear her singing. Right. And it was very gentle and soft and it was beautiful. So that's why when you say about the nurse, I was wondering yeah. if it was in another, the other section. So. The, the, the hall here seems to be extremely active. Yeah, um, I walked into that hall and went, oh, yeah. okay, here's the tunnel of activity. <laughs> It seems to be very, very active, and a lot of that is Irish Army or, um, equipment. You That's know. the locals. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. have got activity in this section before. Yeah. What have you had? An Irish Army guy, a young guy, um, who came through and he lit up cat balls for us. When we asked him to light up certain cat balls, right, yeah. certain cat balls ah. were lit up. Awesome. They all didn't go off, but we said, will you light up the middle one? The middle one went off. Yeah. Will you light up the one nearest the hall? Yeah. That one went off. Yeah. So we've had activity. So when we do it, with, between us, we gathered that it was a young Irish soldier. That's what we got so far. If you put them in the ambulance there on the seat or on the dash and ask questions, they should light up. They, okay. they're, they're, they're awesome. Awesome. Yeah, don't be surprised. You know. ah. <laughs> um, we had a paranormal team here and, and from Northern Ireland and all the glass and all started to vibrate, uh, which I've never heard of or I seen of or heard of before. And the girl just walked up and said, listen, I'm gone, goodbye. Uh, but I've never <laughs> but heard of it. this is what we want. Yes, yes exactly. But, uh, I've never heard of it before. Yeah. Uh, it's the first time I've ever heard of that. But the girl put the team that night, that was it. Uh, <laughs> so, but, Can you take um, a lot more than that, does Gareth? You'll see orbs down there going up and down and mm. through cabinets and out through cabinets and maybe following people down. Oh, it would be interesting um, to see them follow you. And you'll actually see, uh, you'll have night vision on the, this here and out the back. The so if somebody has um, feels cold or that, you, you can look and you'll actually see an orb going through them at times, you know. Mm. So it's happened to me. A that lot, would be yeah. cool if, like, they the orb went through them and go oh, at the same time yeah, because yeah. that's that of, is of interest. Yeah. I've done yeah. that four or five times now. Yeah. People have done that when we checked it. We kind of went, there you go, you know. Yeah, so. okay, that's pretty good. Do you need a torch for in here? Uh, no, it's okay. Um, I can see it a little bit. Here, do you want the torch? Here we are. Thank you. Well, this side is the evolution of the Irish Army up to modern day. Um, just gives an idea. And yep. that's the, the opposite side there is uh, Napoleonic. The reason we put Napoleonic in is because Wellington, uh, basically he was uh, an Irishman who was from Trim, uh, and a, a turn of his army were actually Irish. So an awful lot of people don't realise that. Um, oh, I remember hearing that story. I can't remember yeah. where we were, where we heard it. But, um, yeah... Uh, 90, as I said, 97% of the stuff here in the museum is original World War One, World War Two. All the guns there, they're all original 100%. So. Wow. <laughs>
So it's approximately, I think, 350 kilometers in the museum. I'm hoping you've got good security on this place. <laughs> but let me say, if there is a zombie outbreak, outbreak I know where I'm coming. <laughs> Get a baseball basket. <laughs> in here, it's the activated. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, you can hide in the tank. No, you don't even have the tank. Ladies in war. Oh, um, okay. So it just gives an evolution of uh, how important women were in the yeah. war. Uh, so they were taken over from men in the factory. So by the end of the war, uh, at the beginning of the war, there was about 5% of the people in the factory were women. By the end of the war, 97% were women. Yeah. You know, uh, Women were flying aircraft from the factories to the air bases. So the people don't talk. They were doing air taxiing. No, I've never heard of that. Yeah. That went on an awful lot. You know the boats that they use in Dublin for the, the tours, the boat, Vikings Flash? Yes. The, those boats were made by women, or is that true? That's, what that's true, yeah. That's, yeah uh, they're they're um, uh, GMC yeah. um, lorries. Uh, and they uh, were made by the women for, yeah. for the war as well. Yeah. I think there was 75,000 of them made yeah. in World War uh, II. Um, it's the only time ever that uh, the Marine Corps or the Army saved uh, the, the Navy because there was a, sh a ship uh, out at sea uh, sinking and they went out in one of them and saved the lads off the, mm. off yeah. the boat, like, you know? So, it's wow. all Polish. Uh, we're entering the American section now. Oh, here we go. So, um, my, we were here one Halloween, uh, and my other half, who is not a believer in any, <laughs> any form whatsoever, but we do a spooky nights in here, and um, what would happen is we'd have give the children the flash lamp on the way in, and we'd have the whole place done with smoke <laughs> machines, and we'd have people in here with buckets with chains and oh. frightening the bejesus of everybody. And uh, my other half was uh, hiding behind. Does it? Does actually. Uh, uh, a cover over there, you can hide behind it, uh, it covers the door, and she was here, and she, this man just walked by her here, and he came along, but she said it was like, he wasn't walking, he was floating, yeah. uh, and uh, frightened the living dead as ever, but she said, uh, the uniform she explained that he had, I actually don't have in the museum, it's a World War One British uniform, uh, with a sheepskin jacket, uh, but uh, I don't have one of them. Yeah, and it, but she was able to explain it to a T. So, she a believer now. Uh, Did you she, tell her the dog knows. story? Oh yeah, but the listen, dog story. We yeah. were here one yeah. night. We oh, were doing sure. Esther's method. Forgot about the dog. Sorry, we were doing. The, sorry, we were doing the Esther's method, and it was two years ago. We were yeah. about to go to Edinburgh, and so we had someone over there asking the questions on the far side. Someone over here, um, listening in. And it started telling us about a soldier and a dog. Uh, the dog's name was, oh God, was it? Because we got the name spot on as well. What was the dog's yeah, name again? Yeah. Uh, Buddy. Buddy. It yeah. came through saying Buddy, dog, Buddy, dog, Buddy. And we were like, okay, because there used to be a bowl when we come in, which you left there, dog bowl of water. Yep. And we're like, oh, okay. So then you rung me the next day. Yep. And I said, we got a dog through called Buddy. You're like, what? And that was personal stuff. So we would never have known no, about that. Buddy. Wow. Their dog is Buddy, and it yeah. came through on the S's too. So we were like going, <laughs> yeah. we know he has a dog, but we don't know the name. And then I was yeah. on the phone to you the next day going, Buddy. And he's like, yeah. And there's no way we could have known that. No. Not a chance. Yeah. That's very cool validation. Yeah. Sharon was above at the reception, and, and she was working away in the reception. The next thing, she could, every hair on the back of her neck just started to stand for no reason. And she said, as clear as day, she could just hear <laughs> at the door. It was like a dog on the inside trying to get out. And she said, like, I had three dogs with me, she said at the time. And she just went, no, 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 I'm gone. And left. You know, she just went, she closed up. Like, but she, she could feel something was there trying to get out. You know, but she just listen to that many stories. Every staff member here yeah. has stories. Yeah. Um, like, we, we've, we have, uh, there's a game called Connect Four. It's a big, massive game. It's about that height and that wide. And we were working here one day. And now you have to physically pull it out for the blocks to fall. Yeah. And next thing, all the blocks fell out there in the hall, you know. Uh, motion sensors coming on, on the hall there. Uh, we'd scout groups upstairs sleeping overnight. And uh, the scout leaders would say, um, were you here last night? And I said, no, no, why? And he says, we heard somebody walking up the stairs, the lights came on, uh, and then walking down the stairs, 
And then uh, when we came down, door, all the doors were locked. He says, there was nobody here, you know. So, and that's the, the scouts. That was, that was last year now. I, I try not to tell them that because, you know, they're better off. <laughs> but, you don't want to scare the kids. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> so this is where we got the, the woman singing, the French, wow. the French cool. nurse here. Right. singing for us here sorry oh. the French nurse was singing here so when we yeah. were here I think that was the second time I ever came here and it was here um and it was kind of this is we were just standing here going do you hear that no do you hear that and we could hear really faint names lovely so it was a woman singing in French who turned out to be a nurse Michelle it's a name I'll never forget right just for some reason Michelle yeah uh we've had a lot of activity upstairs mm. um and we were outside working, um, there's a, a lean-to on the side of the, uh, the building here and uh, we were up the ladder up, hanging up lights and I came in to get more cable ties. And when I went outside, Gavin, the guy that was with me, was out in the, out in the playground and he was, he was, you could see him looking up and down and, he, and, and then he saw me coming around the corner and he, he, he just, he, I just knew there was something wrong. I said, what's wrong? And he said, somebody's after running across the roof. And he said you could actually pop, 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 pop the whole way across the roof. But I've had people staying here, uh, paranormal teams, and they said they hear people walking on the roof outside. Hmm. But you physically can't get up to it. It just. Uh, oh, okay. Do you remember so the last time we were here? I couldn't walk down there. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, that's right. I couldn't yeah. move. I got to the top of the stairs yeah. and physically couldn't Can move. It's going to be see, interesting to see if that happens to Renata because that happened to her. But there was more to it than later on we went up. We went in the room, we picked up a grenade, two of us picked up the grenade, we sat down away from the other two, there was four of us here, and we got coats, we put one of the Irish coats over us, the other woollen coats, army yeah. coats, yeah. and we sat there and we couldn't stop laughing. For no reason, the two of us had both touched the grenades, so we think it's something to do with the grenade, off that, and the two of us were in hysterics laughing, couldn't stop, and as soon as we walked out the door, we stopped. So it'll just be interesting. Yeah. I, do you remember I was I couldn't move. Yeah. I was just going. I can't go. I I want to move, and I couldn't actually move. For mm. People upstairs saying they, they felt they were being choked. Yeah. Um, that's happened a few times. I've seen uh, sitting in a circle and watching the night vision uh, cameras there, and you actually see orbs come up in through the floor between them, and then yeah. going around them, and then coming out the windows. Um, and yeah, you see so much stuff here. You just. I don't, I forget half, I tell yeah, you, yeah, you know. I, I get it, yeah. Um, the first, when the museum was first being built, um, that, that uh, I was standing on that balcony over there, and it was just before the roller doors went on that it was secure, uh, but we were driving all the vehicles in and putting all the vehicles in, and I was here uh, one evening working late, and uh, I could c clearly see somebody running down that way, but stooped down, and uh, I flew around the back and flashlights on and checking everything and nothing anywhere to be seen. Uh, about three weeks later, I was here doing the same work again, but we'd all the roller doors down and same thing again. A guy stooped over, running straight down there. Um, but uh, physically it was impossible because the whole place was locked up. Mm. Uh, so then about uh, six months later, I was talking to somebody at the end there and I could see him and he was looking off my shoulder. He's kind of going, and I said, did somebody run by me? And he says, yeah. So, that's, that, yeah, to that have it, someone yeah. else see the same thing—that's yeah. that's really it makes you feel like you're not insane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Yeah. But there's, there's stuff like the place is just full of stuff, yeah. you know. The movie camera. We've, uh, all the motion sensors are all covered, so as you walk around, the lights won't come on. But I've had paranormal teams here saying the lights come on for no reason. They're upstairs next to the lights will come on downstairs, which is physically impossible to do. But it, it happens uh, now and again. Um, so, but I've never, I've seen it happening, but I've never passed much heat. Yeah. But we've them all covered with cups. So there's yeah. three here. There's one there, one down there, and one in the next one. And there's two on the hallway you come down, mm -hmm. and people have said the lights went on there as well. And they, they said that they've seen red lights up there um, and at the top part where, where it looked like there was a red glow moving around up there. Yeah, I've seen the red glow on the TV that was over there because I noticed it and I, I sort of mentally catalogued it to think if I see a red light in that yeah, area, that sort of be. But, but I'm on about now above there. See where the glass is? Yeah. In there. In there. In there. And they're down okay. here and it's moving around. 
which is impossible. I love the impossible. It makes me happy. <laughs> it's a word that's used a lot yep. in the paranormal field. Uh, we had a paranormal team here and there was one of them sitting here beside the fireplace and he had a camera and he was taking a picture of his friend down at the end uh, and when he took the picture, uh, he showed me the picture and you could clearly see a German soldier walking away from him down that way. Oh, and you could, wow. see, you could see the studs on his boots and he, he was just walking like that there, you know, but he was, he was actually just about there. Wow. But I mean, it was as clear as I'm looking at you. It was unreal. Wow. We had it as well when we came here the last time. We had one of the guys kept on picking up uh, on the SB11, uh, SB mm -hmm. Nazi, Nazi Hitler. Ah. So we well, got I that agree. sent to us. And that was pretty cool, actually. Jeez. <laughs> so a uh, little bit of history for you on Renata is that her parents were in concentration camps. Right. And my husband's uh, mother was also in a concentration camp and had... Um, a baby starved to death on her breast oh, in there. So we've got a very strong connection to right. the concentration camps and, and the hatred of what was done. So right. this is really, I can't wait. I know it's horrible, but I can't wait to see how Renata is going to work with these tonight. Um, yes. There was um, a paranormal team here and they, we, you've seen the helmets around the corner there. Mm -hmm. And they said, will you take that one out? That was me. Was that you, that was it? That our team. And that's the, the helmet there. We just yeah. took the helmet out and put it over there. We and just asked. Said, take it away. We yeah. all got to hold the helmet. And for some reason, we're just feeling going, it's in the wrong place. Yeah. It was with helmets from a different country or something. We were like, going, it's in the wrong place. It needs to be moved. Yeah. So William moved it on top of the tank. So yeah. that was the last time we were here. Oh, that's right. It was two years ago. And we, we, so we it's did that one it. up there on top of the tank? On no, the... no, that one over there ah. on, the, on the gun. Um, that would have been uh, anti-aircraft. Uh, gunner, um, they would have had that helmet, but it would have been in with the Germans. But I say all Germans weren't bad. No, just no, they weren't. Badly led. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's happening. It's still happening today. Yeah. Well, it's everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Um, upstairs. Not um, in Germany. I mean, in the world. In the world. I <laughs> love the, world. the Germans. They're all fabulous. Uh, <laughs> I often come in here in the morning, and uh, you'd, you'd you'd see somebody peeping around the corner up there, looking down at me. Often happens. I mean, it's very common up there. It's actually, very common. Yeah, yeah. And they're just looking. It's just like they're leaning over, looking out. And when you when you go up to have a second look, they're gone. Mm. But you just they're like doing that, you know. So uh, yeah, cheeky buggers. <laughs> All right, <laughs> keep moving. Okay. Um, we had a woman here um, earlier on. Uh, well, late last year, and she. Can I just show them our friend here? Oh, yes. Do you want to show, yeah. show them that? <laughs> I'll, I'll let you. You've got longer arms than me. Right. Does everyone recognise this person? So I'll just, just have a close-up. Now you do. <laughs> <laughs> He's been busy. He's modelling for everything. I love it. <laughs> but with the helmet on, you don't recognise him. No, you know, not at all. No. Sorry, interrupted. <laughs> Um, so this is where the helmet was, wasn't it, originally, when we came in? That's where the helmet was originally. Yeah. Um, and, and we took it out. Um, there was a, a woman here, um, she landed late last year, and, and she had items in the house that her father got in World War II, and she didn't want them in the house anymore. She said she just had a bad feeling from them. Mm. Uh, and only a uh, little over a month ago we put them up now, so that's actually the Nazi flag there. Ah. Uh. Uh, now... Since we put that up in the museum, um, things kind of change. It's colder. It's it's it's. I don't know. It's, it's. I've had two paranormal teams here since we started putting that in, or we put it up, and both of them said there's something negative. They've been coming here six years, and it's the first time they yeah. ever had something negative in the place. You know. Yeah. So. Um, well, the energy that is tied to that. Yeah. And. Um, but that one was well. The trauma used. There's, there's three of them in total, but the other two look like they were never used, but that one there was used. You had no one it was used, you know, but... Yeah. The people at home that are watching this, do you pick up anything from that? If you do, let us know. Put it in the comments. What are you feeling? That it was actually used. Hmm. But I'd come into the museum now afterwards and, and 
actually cold to the bone. It, 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 I can't. It felt like I was walking into a freezer mm. when I walked in the door, which I've never had before in my life. So I, I've never felt that cold. Mm. Uh, and I've been in minus five, minus six, but it, t- it felt colder than that. You know, yeah. it was just hard to believe. Uh, and Sharon, my other half, uh, she came in and she was wearing a full winter gear uh, and she came in and she went, oh, <laughs> and, and, and it was it was far colder inside than it was outside, yeah. you know. So, yeah. or as uh, as Renata and I like to say, it was nipply. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it just amazing the amount of work that has gone into this yeah. is astounding. Yeah, I think it's that one, or maybe Absolutely it might be that astounding. one. I don't know. Yeah. But you she get thought the there chance, was more. No, no, please no, 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 come and visit. Yes, support this. It's a personal so collection. Yeah. It is not um, supported by anyone. As he said, it was well, uh, a collection that's, that's gone crazy. Like the counter, physically counter. <laughs> that's the thing, so. Is that the way with the mind? The eyes yeah. and see it. Yeah. So these are the heads that we that people have said they thought they saw moving. Right. So these okay. are the, the three of them up there. So it's just something could be interesting to keep an eye on for later on. Okay. That's so that's the ones up the very top there. And over there. So we'll watch out for them. Awesome. We're, uh, we're, people have vice boxes and, and, and different equipment. Yep. I, I don't know what all the equipment is. Uh, but they said they often hear chatter on the radios in here. Uh-huh. Uh, and it sounds like it's, it's a, 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 basically a, a, a panic and, and then it just goes quiet. Yeah, so it sounds like it's nearly in a battle scene mm. and then the whole thing just goes quiet. So, uh, that's, I've had about three or four teams say that. You know? Yeah, it's, it's like uh, a trauma that has yeah. settled into the very fabric of the items. Yeah. And they're, it, you know, every now and then it kicks off and replays. Yeah. Mm. So, to remind uh, us not to be silly again. Well, I had, a, I had a security team in putting in motion sensors and putting in uh, all the, the fire sensors and everything. And um, they were here working and they left. They just said, no, they won't come back uh, unless I'm here. <laughs> um, because they had their, their radios, you know, for, for talking on. Oh. And next thing, the stuff is coming through on the radios. <gasps> On we could radios. leave a walkie-talkie on. Yes. I have a walkie have with some? me. I have a walkie-talkie with me. Oh. Hmm. Hang on, just let me show you this. <laughs> really excited, really excited. Well, if I just double check with you, what was in the area before you put the museum here? Is there, what's the history of the area? No, there was nothing physically on this field, but I've been told it was called a famine field. Um, there were supposed to be people that died in the famine buried in the area. Um, in the field next was here, there was an old uh, hedge school. A hedge school was basically in the in the 1700s that... Uh, the English government uh, didn't want Irish people to be smart, so they weren't allowed to have schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they took to the hedges and, and went into fields and they taught them maths and English and Irish and, and that type of thing was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, in the field beside us over here, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm only talking two, 300 uh, metres that way, 300 mm-hmm. metres that way, um, we're talking, uh, there was, there's an old fort in there. Uh, and what we reckon it was, was um, in the old days when wolves were in Ireland, uh, the farmer would put all his sheep or his cattle into it during the night time and then let them out during the daytime. Uh, so it's things like that. It's, um, there, it's you're like a yeah. vortex of stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now I've often, uh, and I've often heard people saying that they're, they're inside and they see children uh, around yeah. the place. Um, and that's that's a very very frequent thing uh, yeah. where they say ch- children looking around corners or yeah. walking or dancing. Uh, and, and I'll be singing again tonight. Yeah. Then we had the what you call the grid light just here on the mm-hmm. wall one night, the same night, that same night, and parts of it on the lower part were going dark, and everything else around it was still the green. And we thought it was children playing with the lights. Oh. Yeah, we thought it was children playing with lights. I think we have a video of it as well. So, yeah, yeah. just on that wall, just as you go up the steps, we sat on the steps. And, and do you know the one with the, with the, the it gives, it's beams of just green lights. That's, yeah. 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 That's that. We had them, uh, they had it downstairs over, over there um, beside the ambulance and they were sh- oh, yes. lighting up that whole area. Uh, and they were looking at it and looking at it. And then upstairs, you could actually see the lights all moving upstairs. 
where somebody was, it looked like somebody was crawling along the ground. Mm. Uh, we have loads of great lights. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so, it's, it's just, uh, but there's so much stuff here. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not even telling you to have it because I can't remember to have it. Yeah. So actually, do you remember the shoes? Do you remember the sandals? Yes. Uh, what happened in uh, recycling, that's the best way to explain it to you. Uh, the Viet Cong uh, in Vietnam, um, they would get old waste tyres and they would recycle them and turn them into shoes and uh, sandals. And that's how they had everything. So if, you, if when tyres were being thrown out, they just took them and took all the rubber off them and turned them into sandals. So you just get an idea of a few bits and pieces there. Yeah. Um, that there is, is, it looks like a sash, but that's actually your week's supply of rice. Oh. So you, you, you fill that with rice and you wore it like a sash, you know. Um, mm -hmm. That's uh, a guy from counter. So um, when that starts bleeping, it's too late, you're going to die. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't start bleeping. <laughs> um, radios, uh, Viet Cong, uh, Special Forces uniforms, just uh, all original. Uh, the only one that's not original is the black one there. Um, Viet Cong militia, which are the local people. Um, because you'll never see a six foot vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Very um, tall. <laughs> just a bit. Purple scarf meant it was female, black and white scarf meant it was male. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, also you could tell on the weave of it, it's a bit like this, uh, the, the kilt uh, in Scotland, uh, you could tell on the weave what part of the country they were from. So That's very cool. Very clever. You'll have um, night vision in the museum. So we have night vision uh, cameras. So there's one there, there's one over in the far corner, one over there, and that's covering this area. So don't be surprised now if you're down here talking and somebody gets a shiver. Take a note of the time because you can check it on the camera right in because ah. there is a lot of orbs here. Um, I don't know if you believe in them or don't believe in them. I, I never did, but there's just too much to not believe in anymore, you know? Yeah. That doesn't move, does the it camera move? So much. No, no. Just in case we hear a sound later on. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'd always say check the time. Check the time on the camera and yeah. then work it on your watch. Because then you're down there and you can say, right, it's, it's now 10.45. We'll go up and check it. Bum, yep. bum, bum. You know, so you can... Yeah. Yep. Fabulous. Um, often uh, the amount of paranormal teams that would say to see children here and to be coming in the door and looking at them over there uh, and following them uh, and, and keeping their distance but watching them. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's an awful lot of that. Um, I think we've had teams saying they saw kids playing, look like ring, ring a ring a rosy up here as well. Like, oh, I, I, I think I've had I'll sing that. Two, or three <laughs> yeah. two or three teams doing that. Yeah. It's my speciality, ring a ring right. a rosy. I have dolls and balls. Yes. The uh, outside, um, there does be a lot of activity outside around the, around the building. Um, uh, we've had campers down the back there and, and next thing on, on, the, on the window. And it opened Let the door. Me and, in. And nothing, yeah, yeah, so mm. um, kind of freaked them out a little bit. But uh, I had people outside and they'd be taking a cigarette break and then upstairs you'd hear on the windows upstairs, you know, it's stuff like that. I'd, I'd, uh, in the early days when I had some of the lads here uh, sleeping in the conference room upstairs because we'd be having a bit of crack and a bit of fun. Now, no drink involved, trust me. There was no <laughs> drink involved. Uh, they're actually doing uh, paranormal investigation stuff themselves and uh, they, they just went, it was nuts. They said it was yeah. upstairs. One of the lads got pushed out of the bed. Oh. Um, <laughs> the, the, the doors were shattering or were banging uh, upstairs. The, the security barriers were banging. Uh, and he, he actually thought it was me. It was five o'clock in the morning. And he came down looking for me and, and sure I wasn't here. I was in a home in bed. <laughs> but there's just there's that much stuff. Mm. Um, people would say they heard a, a dog walking around outside, but there's nothing there at all, you know. So, But there's, there's so many different stories. I'd had a um, paranormal team here uh, and they were standing back to back and they had the, I can't even name the rods is yeah, right. We've done that. Have you done that as well, have mm -hmm. you? And they, they were standing back to back and they were saying, is there anybody, uh, uh, are you related to anybody here? Uh, cross for yes, out yeah. for no, and the cross. And they went through everybody and they, they came to, they said, is, are you related to William? And they crossed, you know. That was us. <laughs> is your granddad? 
Yeah, but another team did it as well. So there we go. Yeah. You know, two teams did it. Uh, but stuff like that, you know, um, yeah. and could ask questions. I had paranormal teams here that I wouldn't tell them anything about my personal life or anything that's going on in my life at all whatsoever. But I had a bad accident here and they said, uh, William, not well, uh, on the voice box. Oh. And um, they said, um, ladder. And they, they were telling me all this the next day. It's just ladder, uh, ribs, leg. And I broke four ribs and I hurt my knee. Uh, and they had all this sort of thing that like it's very they, they, they are, they're not they know it yeah. means that they're yeah. here they're present it's not residual it's yeah. it's intelligent yeah. yes yeah and they're like the stuff they were telling me like uh, that yeah no I never told anybody you know yeah but they could tell where they told them like where I had the accident on the site and all like you know mm. so so there's, there's that many different stories, but don't be afraid to ask them questions. Yeah, all right. Know, and use the voice boxes and, you know. If, if somebody wants to come and visit the museum and uh, do a paranormal investigation, what, what do they have to do? Uh, ring us. <laughs> okay, so uh, how, do you, what's your phone number? It's, uh, I'll give you the mobile, which is uh, 0035386 and that's you. That's, that's a, me. That's for William. Me Twenty-four hours a day. Seven no, days no, a week. don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have calls from Australia. In the middle of the night. Can I come and visit? I know, Alison and Keg, you've got to come over here and check this out for sure. And uh, maybe even Amy's crypt. We'll get some more Australians over here. And uh, she'd love it actually yeah, here, wouldn't she? She would. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll leave it there because you've given us so much already. Um, we'll head on now, and we're going to uh, actually. We're going to start our own investigation. Now, I have, I'm not going to tell Renata or anyone the information that we've just received, uh, and we'll see what we get tonight that will match up with some of the stuff that has happened. Or maybe we'll get new stuff, who knows? But uh, stay tuned to the next episode of The Dark Side to find out what went on in the museum.